hey everybody, welcome to Kush and Kai. I'm Kai. I am excited. Kush Hazer, what's good, y'all? Oh, it's a day, it is a training day. Oh my god. My. Ah, oh, Kush, how many times do you think you've seen this movie? <clears throat> I saw this in the theater, and I've seen it maybe 50 times. Now. 2001? 2001 training day. I saw this at the, not the Galaxy, the, the, the Alexandria. Ah, uh, yes. Hungarian 18th, maybe. Maybe. But that, that's where I originally saw this. I love this movie. This movie actually has a lot of crazy history, including 9 11 stuff. Ah. Which we're going to get into. But, dude, I was told that you had never seen this movie prior to this. And I couldn't be more excited to hear what you think about it. Oh, man. I dare you to hate this movie, Kyle. Oh, you can't. Okay. So, what this movie is and why I can't hate it is just. The preeminent performance of one of our greatest actors of all time. Like, Denzel is a fucking force of nature in this thing. Mm -hmm. And just how Anton Fuqua lets you sort of realize through Ethan Hawke's world, like, what this wolf is in sheep's clothing. Like, they, it just slowly walks you right up to the line every time of like, oh no, this is, this guy's not good. This is no good. <laughs> I mean... You're right from that opening scene when it's, tell me a story. <laughs> like, like when he's got the newspaper or, God, one of the best scenes of all time is the poker scene where Ethan Hawke is, or Jake is gradually realizing what's going on. Mm -hmm. It's like, you've been left to die. <laughs> Man, so much good stuff. And actually that scene's impressive because it's one of the best scenes without the Denzel performance, right? Is that it? Which which is impressive, it's, but it's, I would say it's even the tensest scene. I remember literally just leaning forward, just going, oh my god, what's going to happen to this poor, fragile white boy here? Uh, and then it's me, Mario. <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah, also how it was confusing how Danny Trejo was not in this movie. Right. When, why uh, was it? Call. He could have played anyone at that poker game, or great a call. cop, or anybody. He's not even in my notes here. Like yeah. so many people are in notes of like this person was supposed to play so and so. Like Trey, it's kind of a small crime that Trejo was not. He didn't just show up in a scene. We got wheelchair Snoop in this movie, yeah. which should have been a disaster, but was pretty good. Like I think they pulled that one off there it's too. Right. It's, it's not bad. It's not great. It could have gone way worse. I think. Yeah, that shouldn't it have. Been bad. It shouldn't have added up in that way. However. However, I do point out the, it was amazing Denzel wasn't in that, because the rest of this movie, let's put anyone else in it, I don't know if this thing really stands up on its own two feet, like, the plot's pretty flimsy, oh, it's, it's we're just watching, like, yeah, we're, we're, we're in it for Denzel, it's Denzel and some cool action sequences, but yeah, outside of that, like, this all happens in a day, it's a little quick and weird. And Ethan Hawke is great too, but mm -hmm. again, they uh, they put so much time into, it's him and Denzel in those scenes. There's so mm -hmm. many two shots of both of them, like, reacting and carrying each other and well, moving around. they're in a car too. This is true, but mm -hmm. yeah, that, but, but that was on purpose. It was like, Denzel was so strong that like, I don't think people noticed, like, Ethan Hawke was freaking amazing in this one. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, no, I, I, that was, uh, supremely enjoyable. Um, I, I liked, I like going along on that ride too, being like, oh no, he is into the Russians. What's going to happen now? <laughs> and then, yeah, all spoilers there, but well, by the time it happens at the end, you're like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, they probably should have gone down that way. <laughs> so since, since you just jumped to the ending there, we're going to, at once, once upon a time, the original story, which was written by David Ayer, mm -hmm. FYI. Uh, he actually had Denzel getting away with everything, which would actually make this the, the realest movie ever, because usually right. the bad guy wins. Yeah, for sure. But, but Denzel Washington pulled, pulled him or Antoine Fuqua saying like, "No, this is this is a movie guy. We we gotta we gotta have some redemption here, and we gotta kill the bad guy. That's me. <laughs> right. I'm the bad guy. You right. gotta kill me. Uh, God, the the bad guy vibes like just what like an operator this guy is i mean just down to contract even when because he's a force of nature like most of the way through the movie but even when he's like off his game or losing his power the moves that he's trying to pull to like 
reset the table. Like he's mm -hmm. framing things differently. It's like, well, yeah, I understand. What if it's like this instead? And he's like, the way he's trying to take control with that, like, it's such a powerhouse performance. Like, it's fantastic. He'll literally murder a man in cold blood and literally, like, actually be screaming at the top of his lungs. And then a minute he goes like, hey, look, man. If this isn't cut off for you, that's okay. You can go back and you you can do a desk job thing. You should probably do the desk job, yeah, actually. You know, but this is part of the game. I need you to be in 100% or not. Like, can you do that for me? If you can, I understand. Just but if you could, that'd be so cool. Calling <laughs> out his manhood when he's like, are you going to smoke it? Are you, all right, maybe don't, maybe don't need this job. It just like gets him to do it. And oh, then the immediately. peer pressure. <laughs> and then immediately has shit over him. He's like, yeah, if you piss hot when they test you. Uh, for killing that guy, like, you're gonna be in trouble, but, you know, he stay with us. Maybe that test doesn't make it back, and you're like, damn it, there's, there's this guy. There's a couple guy. inconsistencies about that scene, so let's, let's, let's get into the nuts and bolts of it. We've already... He smoked PCP. <laughs> we were told he smokes PCP, but... Right. He, when he... He picks up the kid. Those are those are college kids. They're not. Those are little college white kids driving a '90s VW. He bug. Oh, the bug. They're not doing oh, PCP. God. Right. Yeah. They're they're most likely buying shitty brown Mexican weed. Bunk weed. And Denzel. Jake knows knows nothing about drugs. He, he he's all about just stopping drugs. It's he doesn't know what day, drugs are. First day as a narcotics officer, nothing about drugs. Knows no nothing idea. about drugs. He's just trying to be a detective. He even shows his man, uh, who, even that guy's just like, oh my god, this is some shitty weed here. Like, yeah, <laughs> it's, a, it's terrible. There's a lot of times we were just like, oh no, like, I've seen this movie, again, maybe 50 times, and yeah, all 49 times, I'm like, he just made that kid smoke PCP. No, I, I think he just smoked some really bad weed and he has no tolerance for it. Well, so. but wait, we don't know. Listen, everything is in his car. Mm -hmm. Like, that guy has everything in there. Even That's true. drugs to stash on other people. So if true, you wanted to smoke PCP, he's smoking PCP. He could have some PCP on him, too. I, I don't doubt that. Like, because, yeah, mm -hmm. there's uh, appliances mm -hmm. in the... Yeah, he's got a whole... Uh, he said Circuit City! <laughs> What's... Shout out to Circuit City. Uh, you shall be missed, but you, you try to open a Circuit City, he throws cash inside blenders for deliveries. That's that's part of the game. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it could have been, but he was on something. It seemed a little heavier than weed. I mean, do you remember the first time you smoked weed? Uh-huh. Doesn't seem much like the 700th time you smoked weed. Did this it? is true. This yeah, is yeah, true. Yeah, you, you... But wait, but Jake said he's. Uh, it was a senior year of high school the last time. And that had been at least 10 or 15 years. If he's our... to be believed. Yeah, 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 yeah. Again. Yeah, who I, do you I trust? believe him. I believe he's squeaky clean. Who do you trust in this movie? Jake. Jake, uh, listen, I think instead of that opening scene, like with him and his wife, which mm -hmm. they didn't really like circle back around with her at all, I could have gone for we're in Vegas, Alonzo kills the Russian. Mm hmm. Okay. I mean, maybe it tips that, your hand. That's hands. more show, not tell. But right. right. Maybe it tips the hand, but at the same time, it's like, I could have. Do you think there's a scene somewhere of that? Where, no. No? No, positive. Ah. Uh. So, one of the, the, the single digit times I saw this, so I only saw this one in the theater. Mm -hmm. Everything else has been on DVD, Blu ray, Netflix, iTunes, etc., etc., etc. By the way, folks, this is the first time we're recording together in three years. Indeed. So if you're hearing stuff in the background, that means we're actually in the same room for once. We have done outdoor things uh, before, though. So this is the first time in a Studio long 1330. Time, including uh, pandemic era. We've done, yeah, oh, oh yeah, pre pandemic. Those yeah, great times. rooftop. <laughs> Windy rooftop and the bus is going by. Anyway, but, um, if, you, if you hear a nice little percussion in the background, if you hear a bus, that's that's what's going on. Yep. But, mm -hmm. but yeah, no, Jake ultimately gets played hard in this man. Pretty hard. I did they say he was a strong safety? Yeah, strong safety, North Hollywood High, which is also weird. Like this isn't Texas, so the fact mm -hmm. that anybody's remembering people from high school football teams is very strange right that guy is a pedophile that is yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only reason that he knows that gary i think it was yeah their buddy uh north hollywood where uh, i believe that's where adam carolla went to high school as well <laughs> probably but yeah the the i don't i don't know if strong safety i would have gone cornerback i think see i'm not a football guy so i don't know what any of that means he's, is he offense is he defense defense he's on okay. the outside he's chasing the receivers around okay. so he's a strong safety but they're over the top like they're trying to stop the big uh, play from he's happening definitely a small guy but he's again they're guy. talking high school football so this is true he could he could have been around but uh yeah jake the uh the boy scout doesn't want to go along with uh any of he's uh, having a hard time adjusting to what the situation is and he also is not committing to just walking away and denzel gives him that out 
three or four times. Yeah, there there is that thing, and of course Denzel wants it to go this way because he's manipulate. You know, he's playing Jake like a fiddle. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that illusion of choice. He's got Jake on. He's got him. He's got him hooked. Like he's like, I want to be good police. <laughs> hey, tell me, Denzel. And uh, yeah, Denzel's just towing him along right by the nose. Um, God, I gotta say, like. The, the plot isn't that deep or thick. Again, my favorite thing just is Denzel being phenomenal. But, God, I got to say that there's a detail in there where um, Jake breaks up a, uh, a robbery rape situation in yes. an alley. And then that comes back around because mm-hmm. it is Thank the... God. Right. But that one felt a little like... That was a little convenient, <laughs> where it's like, oh no, it's his cousin, oh, it's fine now, we'll let you live. It was like, okay. <laughs> that one, There's a couple parts that are like, all right, I got it. Mm-hmm. Or even, I mean, the director's, uh, their infatuation with like, I don't know, now we'll artfully place a story in. That's kind of like our story, but somebody's telling it. Mm-hmm. We had a tale about a snail, then somebody with the peanut butter, uh, one of the three wise men was telling the tale about the peanut butter. Peanut butter's a great story. Peanut butter the butt story. Um, which was good, but I don't know, it felt telegraphed when it's like, listen, here's a, a wise tale that mirrors our own. You're like, all right, I got it, I got it, I got it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, I liked it, it fit, it was good. Again, it's 01, so it gets, you know, you get some uh, storytelling points, cred, because so many people have, like, cribbed from things like this. But uh, this is definitely a Denzel performance, too, where um, I think Jay Farrow marks his his impression of Denzel off the off of this one. Okay. He's like, okay, all right, yeah, <laughs> boom! Like, he, all of those ticks were picked up from okay. Alonzo Denzel. Jay Farrow is actually on the soundtrack, so it's a very interesting... Oh, good times. <laughs> very interesting uh, detail. I didn't even... This is one of those few movies that should have a great soundtrack, like Dr. Dre's in his Snoop Dogg's I like the do- that Dr. Dre drop, that like when that started playing and his car is going up and down, I was like, oh, okay. it took me right back to I that. big audible. Woo! That was fantastic. I like how that didn't factor in ever again either. The car had being on the lifts and stuff. Like right. It was just that one time, then it went away. <laughs> then we were dead. Yeah, okay. <sighs> this, um, this is Antoine Fuqua. How many movies of his do you think you've seen? I've seen the... Oh, God, what was it? The... Not the Executor. What the is replacement it? Replacement Killers? Ne- I've seen The Replacement Killers. Okay, I like that, that one. That Chow Yun Fat. Chow Yun Fat. That's, that's his debut directorial performance. Oh, good stuff. Mm-hmm. No, it's the other Denzel one. The... Man it's like fire. three of them. No, the... Oh, God. Oh, the... the yes. The Equalizer. Equalizer, there it is. That's yes, right. I've okay. seen a couple of those. I forget which There's two. There's only two of them. Oh, yeah. no, there was three. There's a Queen Latifah TV series now. Gotcha. And before that, there was a series in the 80s with some stuffy British guy. Wait, was Queen Latifah also in the um, uh, Training Day uh, series? <laughs> I didn't watch it, but she might as well have been. Yeah, that was the one with Bill Paxton. Oh, Bill Paxton. And, what and, happened and there? Dude. Well... They tried to make a Training Day TV series. They tried to swap out the race roles. <laughs> so Bill Paxton's playing the Alonzo character. Of course. And some young up-and-coming black actor is playing the, the, the Jake Hoyt character. This sounds like such a bad idea, Chris. And then it, it was supposed to be ten or more episodes, and it got canceled because, unfortunately, Bill Paxton died. Right. <laughs> that man... It might have gone longer. Like, I'm surprised the Lethal Weapon series went three seasons, even with a, that, a, casting, a heavy casting replacement. Oh, boy. But, that but, was... but Training Day, like, is amazing. It was a thing. I, yeah, God rest Bill Paxton, but, like, there's, I mean, what you've described, too, it's like, well, we'll race switch it. It's not Denzel. It's a show, and it's on CBS. It's like, you've made so many bad decisions in the set here. Training day. Over ten episodes. Like, yeah. it's already a long day, but, like, come on. No. This isn't 24. Again. We're, we're not doing that. Yeah. I One, yeah, the one movie, great. But, gosh, how many, how many series now? This happens so much with true crime. I think, and other like more popular like docu mini series where they're going like six or seven on this killer or this heist or whatever, and you're like, okay, 
you could have done this in two hours. Like, you, this is a two-parter at best. You're just stretching these interviews out with nobodies. Like, please, what, what, could we have a standard for this? Um, yeah, I think that is a problem uh, we're, uh, we're, we're sitting on, where it's like, can this be a, can this be a franchise? <laughs> No, it cannot, unfortunately. No. Okay, so for training day, like we've we 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 jump right in. I, I spoke my praises of Denzel. I, when you first saw it, I mean, when it was unfolding, like, were you rooting for Denzel? Because you're not an anti-hero guy, but I'm not an anti-hero guy. But you can't help but just like, come on, he can't be the bad guy. Oh, he's fucking he, right. He can't be he the, can't bad, be the guy. bad guy. What are you talking about? And also, just, even when he is the bad guy, you're just like. Damn it! I really like it. He makes a lot of good points. Yes, man. He beat- even though he's trying to like save his own life from Russian mobsters, and and he screwed his whole crew out of like yeah. their their share of the, the of, of, of the booty they just picked up in Roger's apartment. Like you you, you want to root for him, you know? Like he's got that charisma that's just through the roof. That scene, the Roger scene. Well, he has they, two scenes now. Which one are you talking? Where they go back? Okay. And it's revealed. It's like. Oh no, we got you, we gotta take the tax, but then he ends up shooting. He tries to get Jake to do it. Jake fucking like puts his foot down finally on something. And then it's like, fine, I'll do it. And he blasts him. God, that sequence, that sequence is fantastic. Mm-hmm. And then he's shooting, like he's for real shooting one of the conspirators, like in the bulletproof. I thought he was gonna die. I was like, for sure, this is going to go <laughs> wrong. Uh, and then they're going over the story, like blue suits are gonna be here any minute. Let's just say it. Let's just say it. Jake came in. He he got shot. Jake came in and shot him. All right, everybody got that. It was like, oh, that's being written right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, fantastic. And then that scene where, yeah, everyone's like, well, we're going to take the money, aren't you? And it's like, well, no, I'm not cool with that. And he lets it linger, but Alonso's like, no, no, I'll hang on to your share. Don't worry about it. But, yeah, I mean, one of the greatest things in this movie is, like, displaying menace. Or, like, is this going to be an issue? Like, when Alonso's, like, ransacking the house of the, the lady who's, like, calling Jake, like, you're a rookie. You don't know what you're doing. Let me see that warrant. And it's like... So when we meet with Snoop Dogg, he gives up somebody named the Sandman. Mm-hmm. Now, Sandman's already serving time right now, which we get from a radio report. Everything happens so fast that you forget things as soon as it happens. Like, right. And even on the 50th one, I'm only picking this stuff up because I had to take notes for this thing. So, the Sandman's already in jail. Ah. But they still go to his house. Right. And Macy Gray is always like, no, the Sandman's in jail. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's literally in jail right now. You can't come in. And he's like, we got the warrant. And, and sure enough, the warrant is actually a Chinese, Chinese right, yeah. delivery menu. But while all that's going on, Denzel is ransacking the house. Mm-hmm. He steals money from the Sandman. Right. That money then goes to the three wise men to buy a warrant right. to execute upon Roger to rob him and murder him, ultimately. Right. I'm not even 100% sure that killing him was the plan A. Yeah, I don't either. I, 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 I think they could have all left the house for a second, but then something happens, someone said something, and all of a sudden it's like, Jake, shoot him. Right. You know, when you kill someone on duty, you get to keep their soul as a slave in the afterlife. <laughs> you you know, create an entourage, dog. <laughs> I was like, fucking ah! A. Even on the 50 time, you're like, there is some quotable shit in this movie. <laughs> you like to get wet? <laughs> <laughs> Which um, is that, that Dave Chappelle sketch. Yes. Uh, you, Larry. <laughs> Gosh. Um, yeah, it was. The first thing that dawned on me, and I had to let it go, was sort of like, this seems like a lot for a first day. <laughs> this is the most stressful first day ever. Stressful and like... He falls as Jake falls asleep multiple times during this day, like via drugs or getting beat up. God, he gets the shit beaten out of him too. Mm-hmm. He's in hobo fights. He's diving off of roofs. He's getting there's uh, gang bangers beating the shit out of him. Not even rifle butted. Yeah, he's threatened to have his shit pushed in. Yes. I mean, there's a lot going on in there. <laughs> Just on emotional torment, he, he, he deserves a day off. Yeah, but, but then yeah, he gets beat up twice. Three times. Three for times. Troubles. Three times, fool. God. <laughs> he, uh, yeah, it's, it's a rough day. And then also, too, 
I can't imagine all of this just sort of gets explained away, even after Lonzo, they find his body, probably. It's just sort of like, yeah, this is going to be a headache for a while. Like, this is uh, problematic. It comes and it goes. It's, and it's, I'll tell you why it happens, because as Jake is entering his house, they, you, you hear a radio edit mm -hmm. from the next day, and it's Officer Alonzo, Officer Denzel Washington, right. was found murdered, serving a high-risk warrant, right. which we know he wasn't. Right. He leaves behind five children. Right. Which wasn't from Ava Mendez. One of them was. No. <laughs> no. No, none of them are. None of them? Ava Mendez is his side girl. That's not that's his That's not wife. his kid? That's, no, that's his kid. That's his kid. That's, that's what I'm his, talking about. But that's a kid no one knows about, dog. Right. There's a wife and children that that are officially on the books. Yeah. And then there's Ava Mendez and her son. Right. He said, yeah, no, you're always going to have your man squeeze, but no, for sure that was his kid. Yes, yeah. but he's, that's not one of the five. No, no, no. There, there's probably, which means there's probably more children there's out there. There's got to be, yeah, there's probably one in every county. I, <laughs> he was saying, he seemed like a busy man. Mm -hmm. um, he, was, he was all over the place. God, uh, yeah, Dr. Dre music cue was great. Mm -hmm. But, uh, man, I mean, just the way he walked in, like, he's deep in uh, blood territory. Doesn't matter, he walks around like a lion. <laughs> mm -hmm. God. Jeez, Kush, I mean, let me hit my notes real quick here. Please but, take uh, your notes, man. We, uh, we've been just jumping all over. Yeah, man. We're, we're definitely out of, out of sync, out of context, but that's okay, man. Like, if you've seen this movie, you know how great it is. If green you've never v seen this movie, you need to see how great this is. No, we yeah. hit the green VW bug. Mm -hmm. Remember those used to have those, um, those, like, fake flower in that front cup holder? They no. all had that. Some of them were uh, solar-powered. Oh, okay. Oh yeah, Ethan used to play strong safety, breaks up rape, yeah. Oh, all of the wolf stuff okay. makes, him, couple, uh, makes him howl like a wolf. Mm -hmm. Are you a wolf? Are you a sheep? Is this wolf? They, he and that's really, after they robbed Snoop Dogg. Yes. So, yeah, there's a lot of that talk where it's like, I couldn't tell for a bit if he's trying to like... Just to see if he's cool or if he's just, it's just mind games. But ultimately, it's both. It's ultimately because both. Because if Ethan had, I mean, if Jake wanted to go along with it, mm -hmm. you know, Denzel would have been cool. He's like, yeah, awesome. Or, yeah, this is what we're doing. But he still had to fuck with him, so he was one up on him. Mm -hmm. Like, making him take stuff or making him howl. But I think ultimately, like, Wolf in Sheep's Clothing came up twice. But ultimately, like, where it really, like, they paid that off was when... Uh, Denzel Alonzo was like, "Oh yeah, you want to shoot me?" And he puts on his badge, and it's the ultimate like, "Yes, wolf it." You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. this is who I am. You're gonna shoot a cop now. And then, and then he doesn't. Jake doesn't. He's like, he just takes it off him and like castigates him. So you're like, "Fuck." Mm -hmm. He might just walk away. So sort whatever. Of, you're like, "No, no, the Russians. <laughs> we forgot about that." I uh, had a line where. Ethan has the shotgun to his head. He's like, you've been playing this all day. He's like, I've been playing this all week, motherfucker. So this is the problem with streaming media these days is when this came out on DVD, it had all all, all, all the bits and fixings, man. It had uh, director's commentary. Oh, did it? Yeah, oh, God, I love the director's I want to commentary. Check that out. Antoine Fuqua is on this, uh, obviously, because he's the director. Why wouldn't he be on the director's commentary? But he goes into it, it was like, like he... he he literally thought Jake was one thing, but then he sees like he's got heart and he's a tough guy and he can't handle himself as he does with the two crackheads in the alley. And he's like, well, maybe this kid does have something. So he keeps, the test never stops. He, he's always like, oh, you don't really want to take the money? Like he's constantly disappointed. He's like, right. you, you didn't fuck your, your training officer? Right. You didn't, you're didn't, not gonna take the money? Like he, he thinks like maybe there's something in this kid that he, like, he gives Jake so many passes, like, well, maybe I won't drop all this on you. Maybe you could be a vital part of the team here. But, like, I need this money. Like, right. And oh, yeah. He clings. To, I mean, they may, even as rangy as the character is, it's such a good choice when it's like, he knows he's fucked. He's still trying. Mm -hmm. But it's just sort of like, give me the money, man. And he's just out there on his own. Solid, solid work. But, again, I think one of the pieces to this whole thing is, like, I heard a rumor that uh, Bruce Willis was considered for Alonzo, yes. which sounds like a disaster. Kush. 
Kush. I've got notes. That sounds like a disaster. That would not have been good. No. I've I've got notes here on who was supposed to be who. You mentioned uh, Wesley Snipes (laughs) as a possible candidate for an Alonzo, which, again, that would have been interesting, I guess. To be fair, I've been plugging a a kick-ass movie podcast for the undisputed movie with Denzel Washington versus Ving Rhames. So that's oh, been on my mind for three yeah. months. Um, that, that's only why that happened here. But if it came up in my notes, I wouldn't be surprised here. So let me just talk to you about casting for a minute here. So Jake Hoyt was offered to Christian Bale. Okay. It was offered to Eminem. Hmm. Uh, Eminem, how would that... Eminem getting like... Fooled for nine, you know, for two hours. Mm-hmm. Is that real? Are we going with that? Because Ethan Hawke has to look like. What happened? Uh, Mark Wahlberg was gonna was considered for Jay Coit. Would have been fine. By the way, this is all IMDb trivia, so always always take it with a grain of salt. Here. Of course. For Alonzo, real quick, Gary Sinise and Tom Sizemore <laughs> was offered the role Tom of Alonzo, Sizemore. but passed. By the way, I don't believe Tom Sizemore has passed on anything. I don't think so either. <laughs> Well, he could have been too crazy at the time. That Not impossible. Oh, one? Yeah. Not impossible. Um, the, Ryan Phillippe was going to be Jake Hoyt at okay. one point. Okay, okay. Let's see. Uh, I think we undervalue how good Ethan Hawke was because Denzel is just throwing haymakers in these scenes. And I want to say they were both nominated for an Academy Award. Denzel actually won it. For, for supporting? One. Ethan Hawke for supporting Denzel for for feature. Oh. And Denzel won feature. Yeah, he did. He had previously won supporting for Glory. Yeah, that's right. And that's why it was a big deal, because he he was the first black man to win an an Academy Award for two roles. But yeah, Bruce Willis came up, and for whatever reason, it didn't happen. But Antoine Fuqua and him would work together later on the next movie, which would be Tears of the Sun. Oh. Great movie. Oh. Very forgettable, but also there was some controversy where Antoine Fuqua and Bruce Willis almost fought each other. Oh, of course. Of course. Which makes sense. Why? Wait, mm-hmm. have Fuqua and uh, Willis worked before in other movies? No, no, no. no. Okay. No, it, it was... It was uh, that, that Tears of the Sun would be the first and the last. Who else? I mean, could I can't name anybody that could have pulled this role off. Like not even for Alonzo. Cl- yeah. Uh, t- it's, uh, if we're talking today, if we were to recast this day, if we were to do the Training Day proper reboot, like there we go. We're back in it. <laughs> you really want to put uh, everyone's favorite Idris Elba in there? I would go Lawrence Fishburne over Idris too old, Elba, and and he's already done Deep Cover. This is true. But too old, too fat. Yeah, Although, I, he's probably not much older than Idris Elba, but still, like. I'm telling you, Idris would be the guy on this one, man. Yeah, he would, but I don't. He couldn't do. He doesn't have the same moves. Like the the, the dude who was in Zola this year, Coleman Domingo. Ah, there we go. No, uh, I don't know if you know who that gentleman is. You've seen a couple things he's been in. Let's pull this up real quick. So he's in Lincoln. He's in Salem. Yeah. Uh, he's in the newest Candyman. New Candyman. He's done 86 episodes of Fear the Walking Dead. Ma Rainey, Black Bottom, Beale Street Could Talk, Euphoria. Man, he's on some good stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, I could see Coleman Domingo doing doing Alonzo today in 2021. Oh, he Going did. into 2022. Ethan Hawke, though. Who would play Ethan Hawke today? Bill Paxton. <laughs> <laughs> Corpse and everything. Yeah. Right? No. No, they're going to get... Who's uh, a clean-cut white boy that would play... Ethan Hawke. They're gonna get um, what's this? What? Uh oh, <laughs> Chris is dying. Internally, I just went, let's just recast Ethan Hawke. Yeah, let's just get get rid of Ethan Hawke. And then I choked on my own jokes. So yeah, no, it'll be I'm Timothy Chalamet, and nobody's gonna like it. <laughs> well, why not Robert Pattinson at that point? Okay. Yeah, our age to ten years. You upgraded it right there. There's another clean-cut white boy. Maybe a little older than Timothy, maybe a little younger than uh, Robert Pattinson. Hmm. Uh, well, not Chris Pratt. What about the kid from um, Stranger Things who's in the new Ghostbusters? Oh, yeah. Homeboy. Maybe, a little, maybe too Now, bad. Yeah, he's too, he's too wafy. Too wafy. Not him. Too Jewish. Too Jewish. That's a, yeah. Can't be too Jewish in that role. 
I don't know. I'm not up on my young actors. Uh, That's pretty yeah, we're both old now. Yeah. Right. Get the guy from Dear Evan Hansen. <laughs> We can age him to actually, be whatever age, yeah. Actually, that's probably really good. That might be good, actually. That'll probably be really good. Like 27, 28 now. Ben, ben Platt? Yeah. Yeah, that'd okay. be good. I haven't seen the Evan Hansen, but, like, I, I'm agreeing with you 100% on this. You'd probably be great <laughs> in that role. Ben Platt. Actually, yeah. No, I'd watch that. <laughs> you know, how, do we know how tall he is? Is he as tall as Ethan Hawke? I think Ethan Hawke's about 6'6", six, 1'. Six, yeah. Oh, oh, God, we just lost a guy that I would be like, oh, I could watch that, maybe, as our Denzel replacement. Gosh, he just passed from an accidental overdose. Williams, what's his, he was on the wire. Oh, yes, yeah, I know what you're talking about. He would have been, he would have been, that, that no, would have been he would have made a better Roger. Yeah, that's true. He, he would have made a perfect Roger, actually. He would have been a good Roger. Well, too bad we'll never know. <laughs> Everyone seems to be upset about that except me. Uh, well, you'll not watch The Wire at some point. <laughs> I still not watch The Wire. Let's see. Yeah, Rantec in the bedroom. Mm -hmm. They're stealing money. Oh, God. How many guns do you think Ethan Hawke has pulled on him throughout this movie? It's it's in the upper... It's in the high teens, maybe? Guns pulled on him? Yeah. I mean, you're including the crew. Yeah, that's a good point. So I would I would just say under ten. Was that Eva Mendez in there? Yes, it was. I wrote Rosario Dawson for some reason, but I know it's Eva Mendez. Too. And then Eva Mendez only nude scene. Makes him mm, good times and makes him a plate of El Salvadorian food, and he falls asleep. He falls asleep because you know some heavy heavy rice and beans, man. And some PCP. He, he's had some PCP. <laughs> and rice he, and beans. He had a couple of beers on the ride there. PCP. They've possibly. already robbed Macy Gray. And she called. Was like, you smell like liquor. You gotta get liquored up to do your job, cop. <laughs> PCP plus rice and beans equals nap. <laughs> yeah, and again, and, and and cheap beer. And uh, cheap beer. Right. Dig. Yeah. No, they needed that. We needed the 40 G's, and they hatched the plan. When they met the um, his crew, I was like, who the fuck are these guys? <laughs> and it was like, oh, they're cops? Jesus. But the, yeah, they look like just other mid-level dealers that they meet on the roof of a thing after they get their uh, their quote-unquote warrant or their uh, death certificate well, to go they, take out Ryder. They, they decide to go to the, the highest, highest, highest point. They're already on the roof, but then they're like, well, we gotta go another nine feet up to the helicopter platform. Gotta get on the pad for some... <laughs> and for, for us camera aesthetic reasons, I get it, but they could have just met down there they under had, the helicopter platform. They had the busiest day of fucking any... Like, they were all over the fucking place. The day starts at 5 a.m. And it's like 24 rules. It's like, we can get across town. In LA, don't worry about it. We can just drive like up into the hills, then we're at the beach. No, no, you can get around. Don't worry. Well, to be fair, they got a siren on them still. I not all the time. They're in. They're in. I, I, I'm pretty sure. Geez, maybe it's never pulled, but I'm pretty sure they. I'm pretty sure they got a a, 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 a couple cherries. Right. On the rooftop. It's the least. You remember of... in the old '80s show, cop shows like. Woo, no, yeah. Put it on the roof. Yeah. <laughs> and someone, that, someone's just hanging on to that sucker. Yeah, like. it looks like a like a juju beat. Yeah, just stick it on up there. Oh, but even without that too, it's like it's still LA. Like you can I mean you can have a siren but you're just still stuck in traffic. I've seen that, that on the highway. True. There's at one point where they pull over on the freeway and sure they get on the shoulder, but like there's no traffic happening on the eight oh five there. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. Also too I love visually they do do some good they do freelance some good stuff in there where they uh Alonzo stops in the middle of the intersection. And cars are going by, like, on either side. Very and that's reflective when he, of a shaft. Of course. And that's when he makes him smoke the PCP. But it's also the ultimate representation of, like, I go my own way. If mm -hmm. people are going this way, people are going that way, it's like, you're right here right now with me. Um, yeah, fantastic. Like, everything reinforcing uh, those character pieces is, uh, is fantastic. Yeah. What did this get on Rotten Tomatoes, okay. if you had to guess? Jeez, uh, 86. I'd go with, like... I'd go with like 82. Okay. Okay. We're gonna. Plus it's, tw it's 20 years later. So. It's 20 years later. People have fetted this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Rotten Tomatoes, 73%. That's some bullshit. That seems low That's for some this. Bullshit. 
Wow. And I get that Rotten Tomatoes is a collective, mm -hmm. but collectively, that's some bullshit. Overall, Metacritic is at 69%. That's some bullshit. The highest would be 7.7 .7 on this IMDb. Is an amazing movie. That is wild. Dr. Dre was in this, but I don't remember it's where. It's such a subpar performance. I mean, it's just, it's nothing. It's, it didn't, it could have been anybody. Who was he in there? I don't even His remember. His name is Paul. Okay. And he's just a lieutenant in... Denzel's army. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, we don't know where, where, what he represents or where he, he's stationed. Was he one of the guys that robs Roger? What the hell Roger, is his name? He was, yeah, he's there. Yeah, he's there. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. No, I was like, I don't. I guess I, I don't. Everybody really know. that met on the helicopter platform was involved I, in Roger's murder. Right. I guess I don't. Yeah, I can't recognize Doctor Dre off That's the bat. Right. Right. Oh. Uh, gosh, would you recommend this movie, Kush? God damn, I would recommend this movie to everybody. Yeah, I. I mean, I kind of want to watch it one more time. Man, you better watch it ten more times. I think dude. I'm gonna this get back that into good of a it. Movie. So. Um, Fukuo also worked a bunch with. I mean, he worked a lot with Denzel. You got some equalizers, but he also with Gyllenhaal. He did The Guilty, Southpaw, a couple others. Yeah. But Let's yeah, get, look, you want to get into Fukuo? Let's get into some Fukuo Let's here. Some Fukuo. Fukuo has a fantastic resume that's better than even I remember. Right? And he's done like he's got eighty three uh, credits, and a lot of these are music videos. Okay. But uh, so the most recent thing he's done is The Guilty, which I don't. That's a uh, Gyllenhaal. Oh, that's the yeah. He plays that, a police dispatch guy. That's the movie I saw in fucking Holland. Oh, that's the one. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So Netflix remade it. Why I don't know, but they they re it, it's also ninety minutes. So kudos to them. It's coming out this month. It might even come out this week. Okey doke. So that's great. He he did the Mark Wahlberg Infinite movie on Paramount Plus, which no one saw. How what is what was that one? It's the Highlander. It's, oh it's God. The one. It's, oh no. It's, but it's Mark Wahlberg. He he's a cop. He's lived multiple lives. Is somebody rebooting Highlander? Yes. I want to. Well, they're trying to. They've been trying to. Henry Cavill's involved now. Okay. So it's most likely going to happen. Good stuff. But I hope he isn't the Highlander. I hope he's the Kurgan. And that's assuming that we're going off the first script. Right. And it's, and it's not a whole new thing. I wanted to like be, be. The Witcher more on Netflix. I really did. I didn't watch it. But I'm, I'm not familiar with the game either. I played one of them. It was fine. Okay. But. I, you know, there's probably some nerds out there that are mad. But, like, I don't know. Just. Putting on the first one, it was just insufferable. It was not well written. <laughs> okay, that's fair. Yeah. Like you said, he did the two Equalizer movies. He did Southpaw. Yeah. Olympus Has Fallen, which is the best oh, of those Oh, fun, yeah. Brooklyn's Finest, which is where Wesley Snipes probably comes in. There Shooter, more Mark Shooter. Wahlberg. There it is. The Call, which is no. Cancel that. That's a 11-minute sh short film. I okay. That was, was the Halle Berry film. Missed that one. The uh, King Arthur, which was uh, Rest in Peace Paul Walker. Uh-huh. Tears of the Sun with Bruce Willis. Right. And then we get into Training Day. And then before that, uh, oh, Jamie Foxx's Bait, which no one talks about. Gosh, what it was, was that only about? okay. It's very forgettable. But it, it is literally 2000. And then before that... I just thought it was that Will Smith movie where he's a con man. No, that's something else, which I didn't see, but that's Margot Robbie's in yes. that. Yes. So, in between Bait and The Replacement Killers, his debut feature film director, he does a couple Usher videos, and that's that's Antoine Fuqua, but he's got a stack. He's been working. Again, I haven't seen everything, but everything I have seen, I've loved. So, everything I've seen is, I would recommend you guys checking out. Do you remember any details from the uh, uh, director's commentary that yes. were uh, so noteworthy? They, they, they coordinated with LAPD and SFPD oh. uh, undercover cops who, who were co um, con consultants on this film. Mm -hmm. So, like, when they're they're in the jungle, like, one, well, that's a real street. That's a real neighborhood. And most of those guys are real gangsters. Right. Um, Terry Crews is in it. Yes, Terry uh, Crews. Uncredited and just, like, just there. Flipping pigeons. That was something. Well, I thought they were going to get more into that, but the pigeons were really like darting around on those claps there. I would love to know. I thought Tyson were. was going to pop up just for a sec in that, but I guess was, he was in trouble in 01, I think, still. He was probably still. Or no. He was no, he was out. out. Yeah, he, he was, was out. out by that point. He's always in trouble. Again, uh, yeah. Danny Trejo should have just been hanging around. Because I, I remember the one scene it's where they're where the like, he's facing down the hole, like, 
it's a bunch of bloods out on the street mm -hmm. and i thought it was just gangbangers but then they cut to other folks and it's like moms and uncles and old Little folks and kids chill, yeah, there's just everybody out there but that was a real I that was a good scene because it wasn't just like oh no and then ethan hogg kills him now because he's the good guy or whatever it was like the community was like, fuck you. We're like, we're turning our back on you. And that was like, how his power broke? And I was like, fuck, that is so, it's good. It's mm -hmm. not just the stupid, like, oh, he got killed. It was like, well, he did, but his whole, the way he was powerful shifted was uh, really, fit, fit, well done. <laughs> Box office was 45 million. It would gross over 104 million worldwide. Tom Berenger was in there. I forgot yeah, about yeah, that. Yeah, he's the three wise men. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Raymond Cruz, who's one of the gangbangers he's playing poker with. Uh, he's the guy who gets mistaken as Hector all the time. Right. But, uh, to be fair, he's named Hector most of the time. True. But he, uh, he's he got some great turns as a Tuco in uh, Breaking Bad. And, oh, okay. Yeah. Breaking Bad still knows. Better better Call, Better Call Saul as well. Uh, he's fantastic in that, but seeing I'm, a young him is a, is good shit. I've never heard anyone say anything bad about Breaking Bad. Yeah, before. it's some anti-hero shit, so uh, be be warned. <laughs> no, I've, I've been warned and I've been caught up. Yeah, uh, but he you, was. You can not watch a movie and you can hear all about it at the same time. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, for sure. Um, they were good. I'm trying to think of the other scenes in there. God, and. The one annoying thing about that whole scene, mm -hmm. even though it's one of my favorite, the the poker scene with the game makers, is that they're playing five card draw Joker's Wild, which is a game for like children. Mm -hmm. Like it's the most boring, flat, like I will take three cards. Like it's the worst. They are Get actually some... not playing cards, they're just hanging out. They're just hanging out. Fuck him up. They're but like, they no, that's but why they we said, don't play for money, I say. Right, that's what they said though. Is like five card draw, Joker's wild. Like, are you chill? Your children? What are you doing? So this movie came out October fifth, two thousand and one. Mm -hmm. Now, I remember it being reported that it was coming out like September eighteenth. <sighs> or September 28th or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then it got pushed back because of 9-11. Right. According to IMDb, it actually had a originally a November 11th release. Oh. But then whatever other movie they were uh, coming out with that year, they're like, well, let's, we'll push that out a couple more months and we'll move training day up a few. And that's, that's why it has its October 11th release. But I swear to God, this thing was pushed back just a couple weeks. So, I have 200 recorded movies on Box Office Mojo. This came in at number 40. Okay. Just below Along Came a Spider and just above Jimmy Neutron, Boy Genius. Wow. Really? <laughs> That's where we landed? Top five movies for 2001. Five going up. Ocean's Eleven. Shrek, number one. Monsters, Inc., number one. Lord of the Rings, number one. And Harry Potter, number one, was the number one movie. What Coming a in year. at just under a billion dollars. That's a rough year. <laughs> mm. Well, there was a national, uh, a global tragedy. Right. Let's see, what else we got here? So. What was that Tim Allen movie that got pushed back? Because there was a scene with a bomb on a plane, but they had to cut that. Oh, geez, I don't He know. played some kind of Shiloh or something. Mm. And then it, into too many of the they had to re-edit the Spider-Man um, trailer. No, they just kept, they had to re-edit the World Trade Center out of Spider-Man. Right. The trailer already existed. Right. And then they would just stop showing it. Right. Because it had the helicopter trap mm -hmm. between the two it buildings. It was a fun trailer. It was yeah, a cute trailer. Was You're good. like, oh, that's funny. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Let's see. Denzel says that Detective Alonzo Harris is his favorite character. Oh, fantastic. The King Kong line was ad-libbed. Oh, Tobey Maguire was one of the Jake Hoyt possibilities. Mm. But he gained too much weight for the role. Oh. Mm, see. Take that, fatty. <laughs> well, I think he was doing Spider-Man 2 at that point. Right, right, right. So. Had to bulk it up. Antoine Fuqua said Ethan Hawke. There's something innocent about that guy. He's just so nice. There's something in his eyes. You can tell he's he's seen something. Ooh, big fan I don't know of, what that means. Big fan of Ethan Hawke. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
When the movie came out, many viewers and critics were skeptical of the scene where Jay Quaid smokes marijuana laced PCP. Alonzo's explanation of how a cop who didn't take drugs offered him on the street would be ID'd as a police and murdered. David Ayer responded in an interview that holding up highlighted sections of the LAPD's rules and regulations. It stated officers were allowed to use narcotics in very specific undercover situations. Oh, okay. And were hewed closely to what Alonzo told Jake. Are you a cop? You have to tell me. <laughs> oh, man. The coffee shop scene was was built on Seven. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, other movies like Gone in 60 Seconds, Ghost World, and Catch Me If You Can also use the same scene. Oh, fantastic. Mm, hey, you know that Catch Me If You Can guy? Apparently, he only ever wrote a uh, bad check for like 800 bucks. No. Oh. None of that story is true. <laughs> I, no, I've never seen the movie. It's a pretty good movie. Okay. But actually, it's sort I mean... He was lying about the whole thing, but it sort of fits, because that's literally what he deceived people. That was his game. Hmm. Hmm. David Ayer is the only one who got to work on this script oh. and was given a congratulatory call from the chairman of WB. Sam Jackson was uh, in, in talks to play Detective Harris. Okay. And Matt Damon also would have been Jay Coit in, in that, in that, oh, right, right, in that right. combo. But you Matt couldn't Damon? have one without the other. I think at the time, that's too young of a Matt Damon. You need a couple more years on him from 01. What about a Keanu as a Jake? Too old even then. Even then? Even then. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In 01? How old was he in 01? That he was, was doing The Matrix. At the that Matrix time. was in, you know, 99. Mm-hmm. So he was mm. doing The Matrix too. Yeah. Um, let's see, the movie is the only uh, movie in Academy Awards history that gave a black man two awards. There you go. Or it's a second award. Let's see. Uh, Clee Sloan. Okay, wait. He worked, Fuqua worked a bunch with Gyllenhaal, mm -hmm. so he must have been considered for that part, too. I'm sure that's going to come up in a minute here. Yeah, Eli right Morales Bruce. was going to be Smiley. There you that go. That would have been amazing. He got recast due to scheduling. Raymond Cruz is, um, he's the, um, Breaking Bad guy. Uh, Antoine Fuqua says the fight between Jake and Alonzo on the rooftop was so violent to show how brutal Alonzo was. I mean, just based on the bullshit we've seen today with, like, just the raid, I think it would have been way more violent. I was like, you threw him into a, into a string of wind chimes? Oh my <laughs> gosh. And then you it's, punched him. Like, it was all right. Like, mm. it, I mean, that fool did jump off a roof. He did jump on, off a roof and then managed to cling to a hood and then keep going afterward. So he gets beaten up, but he's got uh, gumption, I gotta say. LeBron James says this is his favorite movie. That's a real quote here. The head, the, the Bloods headquarters where Eva Mendez lives, like, it just looks like a prison yard. <laughs> this guy's doing, like, doing <laughs> rapping. Right. Yeah, he's there. They got people with those long socks, a lot of red pants. It's, uh, it's a thing. He then... Don's full on crip blue mm -hmm. after he's done banging Evan Mendez. Like he was wearing all black. For sure. And then Jake fell asleep and then woke him up with his gun on the knee. Right. You know, like it, it didn't register me until you literally just started talking like, you know, they were in a blood neighborhood. I was like, they were in a blood neighborhood. Good call, Kai. Yeah. Good call. Was he did they dose the Salvadorian food? Because he no, fell asleep just, so that, easily. That's just, just heavy, man. It's just heavy. It's a lot. <laughs> how many times? Have, uh, I can't tell you how many times I've had a burrito and just fell asleep. It's time to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> Mickey Rourke. It's nature's have, NyQuil. <laughs> Mickey the Rourke would have been Roger. Okay. Uh, the that studio works. turned down Fuqua's request, so they're like, fuck that guy. Really? How much shit did... Jesus, he, he burned some bridges. This was prior to the wrestler. The wrestler, yeah. Was the wrestler like 04, 07? Oh, okay. 08, 07? No, it was 08. It that was, 08. was when he was coming back. That was after he got all the surgeries, too. Yeah. He was still big into chihuahuas, though. Okay. That was his jam. And he said Bruce Willis offered the role of Antoine Fuqua. Oh, boy. Uh, he was offered the role of Antoine Fuqua, and then Alonzo turned him down. Nice. Yeah. It's it weird how that happens. It is weird how that happens. This, oh, the, the Chevy Monte Carlo had some modifications. As you folks know, if you've listened to the last 57 episodes, when I, when I pull these trivia details from IMDb, 
they're they're user generated. People people have submitted these, and sometimes they get past the powers that be. They're quote unquote trivia. <laughs> Kai, yeah. Did you know that when Detective White is sitting at the table, playing cards with Smiley and his crew, they ask him, "Has he ever had his shit pushed in?" This is street terminology of asking, has he ever engaged in anal sex as a recipient? Mm. I didn't know if you knew that or not. Oh, boy. By the way, Smiley follows up with saying, I always like getting love from the homies. Which is what he didn't say, actually. He said, I always got love for the homies. Yeah. But, did you know that that was an anal sex reference? Uh, It did dawn on me um, at, at some point when they were yelling at him and then chasing him down a hall and pistol whipping him that, uh... It became evident at that point. <laughs> I'm glad Damn. I ended on that one. Uh, this is an amazing movie. Kai, I'm so glad you finally, finally fucking saw it. I don't know what, a, that, what, what prevented you from seeing it up to this point, but I'm glad. I don't know. Cushion Kai was the reason you saw it. And here was the deal is that if somebody asked me about it, it, it's, it, it was already revered in my head because people have talked about it. I've heard folks you make knew mention. All about it. You of course, about it through I knew he. I knew that's where he got his best actor Oscar from. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it was a. Uh, it was definitely a treat to see. And then, this movie does a good job of not. Because um, listen, some movies don't age well that have like some technological embrace and there's a couple of flip phones in here mm. it's very limited but even without that like they did it still holds up in a great way and that, that stuff's minimal but it still manages to feel very feel very la at parts and feel like i mean it's a uh, it holds up man uh, great job uh, by everybody around and uh, yeah I, I would recommend uh, giving this a watch just to see like tip top Denzel I think the only other thing my favorite thing before this and I mean I, I would just put them up in like on a Mount Rushmore of um, Denzel performances but um, him in uh, he got game okay. is another just fucking fantastic performance of uh, it's not the same kind of menace, but it is like there's this fatherly derision of mm-hmm. like I pushed you so hard. I hope you know why. It's like it's different, but there's the same heat that this character has. That it's like God damn, gotta love me some Denzel. Um, yeah, uh, go go see uh, go see he got game and uh, and uh, training day if you haven't already, everybody. There you go. It's a solid double feature right there. That's what's up. Okay. You got anything you want to plug? Uh, Rollerball is Rollerball fantastic. That is. It's a great movie. It's a great episode. As wild, that one is good. I recommend going back and checking that one out. Yeah, Christian Kai on the social meds, and uh, yeah, share and like with a with a friend. That's what's up. As for me, I, bu- I do a bunch of stuff around here. We we mentioned maybe earlier that uh, me and Jamil Hempel, oh, yes. wrestling hall of famer. Fantastic. We, we talked about Norman Jewison since you brought up Rollerball. Yeah. He, he directed a movie called The Hurricane in 1999, yes, just he before did. this. It uh, it got Denzel a nomination, but was just just short. Came up uh, short of, of making that win. I forget who took it. We both agreed. It was like, oh, that was some bullshit. But the movie's good. You'll enjoy it. I hope you like the 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 episode as well of Sweet Science Cinema number five. While you're at it, check out the microdose that comes out weekly, and then of course uh, also weekly, wafflebox.pod.com. You should check that out. Hell yeah, that, that's a great time. Otherwise, rock on, Kush. Rock on, Kai. What? From the Bosnet family. Take that, fatty.